Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Making Of, and I'm so excited because today is actually the very first episode of The Making Of Limitless Dental, and I feel like this guy needs no introduction. If you are living under a rock, you may not have heard about him, or you may have, even if you have been living under a rock, but Dr. Nick on Instagram, guys, he's got over 100,000 followers on Instagram and um, his reels are freaking hilarious. Stop this recording now if if you aren't already following him because you need to. This guy is so, I mean, he's he's the real deal. And I um, I got really excited when he he said we could document the making of his startup journey. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the one, the only, Dr. Nick, Dr. Nick Ciardiello. Welcome to the making of. Oh, thank you for having me on, Ashley. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all those kind words. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. I really put my heart and soul into doing the Instagram thing. So I, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, um, you are, I mean, I have so many things that I want to pick your brain on because you're obviously, you're very easy on the eyes, which makes it very (laughs) easy uh, to, for, for you to be on camera, but you're, you're, you have such um, charisma and um, a great sense of humor. I mean, you make fun of everybody, which is what. (laughs) Well, you can't just make fun of one one person, right? You got to go for it. Make fun of myself, like that's what you got to do. <laughs> oh, you know what's funny? I the first video that I ever saw you put out, and and I was late to the Dr. Nick bandwagon. Apparently, <laughs> um, it was the video that you made fun of oral surgeons, oh, and yeah. I thought you were an oral surgeon. I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like is this guy for real? And then I was reading the comments, and then I just. I discovered like, no, this guy is like making fun of everybody on, on yep. his page. So, um, gosh, okay. We're going to, we're going to, I'm, well, I'm going to pick your brain about your social media and all of that. But before we get into that, for those of us out there who don't know you, who is Dr. Nick, what's your story? And, um, like start us off from the beginning from dental school. Yes, yes. So uh, I graduated dental school in 2017. Uh, I did a one year residency, uh, GPR, graduated that 2018, obviously. Um, Then I private practiced for about, I guess, for about five and a half to six years now. Um, And just about two years ago is when I decided to try my own startup. Uh, just because I was burned on a lot of partnerships with people. I was waiting around, waiting around, waiting around, and then sold the DSO, sold the DSO. And then I was just like, screw it. I'm going to try to do it myself. Uh, Now, in terms of the Instagram, that started the social media. I started probably my fourth year of dental school. And that wasn't me. That was an an old girlfriend that I had. Uh, She was like, why don't you try to do this Dr. Mike, like, you know, Dr. Mike, he's a big, oh, yeah, how to be the dentist version of him. And I was like, damn, I don't really want to do this. And like, you know, we posted uh, one or two photos of me and scrubs in a hospital. And it's just like I had 400 followers and I got like a thousand followers overnight. And then it just kept going and going. And like I evolved from doing just like those standard photos that like you don't have cases to post you don't have an office to film at so I started with that and I started building it and you know in the first year I went from zero to like 40,000 in the first year and then you know, Shut started, up. yeah it, it grew like wildfire the first year and then like I started slowing down on my posting um and I I know this is not really my dental education or anything but you know, I started posting a lot and I was getting patients that were getting stolen from different offices I was working at. Uh, So I slowed down a lot throughout the years because it's hard to promote yourself as an associate and without promoting the office. Right, right. And like, you know, you're not there every day a week. So when the patient calls, hey, I want to see Dr. Nick. Oh, he's only here Monday, Thursdays, but we can have you here on Wednesday. And you're just like, oh, patient just got stolen. And it happened to me a few times. So I slowed down. And just like this past year, a year and a half, once I realized I'm opening my own business again, that's probably when you saw me when I started posting again, uh, because it was years and years I took off from really doing the the continuous posting and the good the good content and stuff like that. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah, it was quite the process. Um, and then just going off that, I finished residency, private practice. Obviously, I, I just graduated Coys. I know you're graduating from there soon uh, in the next, what, month or two, I believe? In, in this June. Congrats. 
by the future, way. Well, future congrats to you. It's coming Thank soon. You. It's a huge accomplishment. Oh you know, my I, gosh. I asked him the last time we were there. So there was a, there's been 1136 graduates in 25 years. So which that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're, we're part of a pretty good uh, program there. Did you know, so I actually emailed them and I was curious about the stat, like, cause, cause Koi Center is, a, I mean, they pull from the world yep. and the guy told me, um, the director said that the number of Koi grads worldwide is 0.0025%. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it feels good though. <laughs> We're about feels, there. <laughs> I feel like I'm mo I'm more proud about that than than dental school. Is that weird? I, th I think I am too, honestly, because like I learned more there. I think than I did in dental oh, school. It accelerated 100%. your dental knowledge like X amount compared right. to dental school. You know, yeah. So th that was awesome. Oh my gosh! Um, absolutely. So okay, so rewinding. Where did you go for dental school? Uh, Rutgers Dental School. Are you from Jersey? Yes, yes. Born and raised in Jersey. Uh, I went to college in Massachusetts, uh, played ball up there. So I played baseball during college, nice. kind of helped me get into dental school because I was a division one baseball player. So obviously that that helped with me getting in. Um, you know, when I got to school, uh, the, the, the crazy thing is like when you play sports in undergrad, you know, your time is very limited because you're doing sports in this. When I got into school, the dental school, like I didn't have baseball anymore. So like for me, the time thing, was kind of easy uh and then that's when i started picking up doing like this instagram so that kind of filled the void in terms of the hours too gotcha now you did you did a residency where uh jersey shore university medical it's in a jersey shore area neptune the uh, belmar gotcha and yeah, then one, where definitely. where are you opening your startup so i'm opening my startup in jersey city new jersey yeah, it's a, it's a very uh, hot area. I mean, I don't know if you saw, there was an article posted, I think last year with all these rents going up. It's actually number one in the nation for rents now. Uh, oh my beat, gosh. Beat San Fran, beat Manhattan, because everyone's moving there from the city, yeah. especially when COVID happened, everyone wanted to get the heck out. So everyone was coming to Jersey City and all the prices just shot up like crazy. Wow. So de decent area to be in, it's very popular. So, oh my gosh. Well, I'm, I'm excited for you. I, I've heard that Jersey City, like everybody is building construct, like just lots of different corporations going in. Yep. There's, there's a high rise almost every other street going up now. It's, it's crazy. It's going to be, it's going to be like a New York City at some point if they keep this uh, up. Now, yeah. do you live in Jersey City? So I actually just moved last Friday to a house that me and my girlfriend bought. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, so, I, uh, thank you. So the, the unfortunate thing is we're undergoing construction at my house. We just moved in. You know, there's not really anything inside the house in there. Really. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like we're, we're, we're reconstructing an old house, but we're doing that at the same time I'm doing the office. So I it's like, it. I got all this construction going on at the same time. Oh my time. gosh. Well, yeah. you might as well throw in a wedding and then a baby at the same time too. <laughs> the wedding thing I had a... <laughs> She's in the other room. She's in the other room? <laughs> yeah, she, she knows it's coming. <laughs> I know we just met, but you know, I just, that's that's how I roll. <laughs> oh, that, that's how it's going to work. It's all right. <laughs> um. Okay, so walk us through, how did you find your space? So... I actually work with a consulting company, uh, Ideal Practices. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of people know them, and I know you, you're probably aware of them. Uh, so I actually started with them two years ago, about now. Uh, it's two been years. that long. It's, oh yeah. Uh, I've had squatters. We'll, we'll get into that. But <laughs> So I started two years ago. I worked with Ideal Practices. They hooked me up with Car Realty. Um, they're based out of New Jersey. I think they're actually nationwide, but they focus on medical and dental. Um, and then we looked for about... I would say it took us about six months to find a space that I liked before we actually like uh, put in an LOI and stuff. Um, and that's when we kind of settled that on this one Jersey City location. Now, were you able to negotiate some pretty good TI? Yeah, so I got about 104000 of TI. What? Um, yeah, it's pretty good, but you have to think I had to reconstruct the whole thing. So like oh. building in a city too is like yeah. very expensive. Obviously the permit fees are double what they would be in suburbia. So like all these little things that like in the beginning when we were planning this out and we were mapping my, like the budget, 
I didn't like realize that there was so many other little like insurances, permits, this, that like aren't really factored into the budget. Like those, no. yeah, those things like you're paying for because like they didn't really tell you about them here and there. Yeah. Uh, so it's been, you know, a little expensive and we're definitely going to go a little bit above it budget, but it, it's just the area we're in. You just got to deal with it, I, I guess. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah, the things that they don't talk about with all of these like hidden fees. So mm-hmm. you are, you, you started with ideal practices about two years ago, and then you got hooked up with car realty and car realty gets paid by the landlord. Yes. Not by okay. us. Not by you. Yes. So you have a space yep. that you looked into for about, you looked for, for about six months. Yeah. So we, we looked at like three or four other places or maybe more than that, probably double, like 10 places. Uh, nothing was the size. I was looking for 2,500 square feet. Okay. Um, so we ended up with 2,600 square feet. Uh, nice. and yeah, it's going to be seven ops. The other cool thing is when they did construction, I think they found more square footage in the place that wasn't originally on the plan because oh. this space is like, so it must be beat 3000 square feet because it, yeah. it, is, it is very big. So I think I got lucky <laughs> with that. Uh, keep that between us <laughs> and whoever, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, it was lucky. That's amazing. Is it? Is it street level? Is it street level? So we're in a um a luxury apartment building. It's called the Cast Iron Lofts building in Jersey City. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a landmark building. A lot of people know where it is because it just got built like let's say eight or nine years ago. And there's a big picture of David Bowie on the side of it. So like everyone kind of knows it. I think like the minimum rent for the one one bedroom apartments there, I think's in the fours now. So like Shut it's shut up. It's a good building to be in because there's a, you know, it's, it's that kind of area I wanted to be in where I am on the corner floor. Um, I have free parking for all my uh, client patients inside the building. Uh, and then there's a brand new park that was just built across the street. So I have floor to, uh, floor to ceiling windows overlooking the brand new park, which is a dog park. So there's what? dogs all day. So all my patients are going to be able to sit there and look at the, look at the dogs all day, which is like something you don't find in a city. That is insane. Free parking in a luxury building, floor yep. to ceiling windows, overlooking a dog park. Yep. Yeah. So got, got lucky. Got that's that's why I waited because we actually had squatters for a year. Um, so like I waited for the space when like other people were like, yo, maybe look for somewhere else. And then, you know, my consultants and the brokers are kind of like, you know, it's really hard to find a new place and start this up. You're probably yeah. adding more time now. So it's just like, do I wait this out? Like, how long is it going to be versus something else? So like, I started low key looking for other things, but I wasn't like actively. Then I started looking at acquisitions and like, mm-hmm. I just realized that there was nothing that was going to happen faster because I already signed this lease. So like, there was nothing going to beat that timeline, regardless of what it was without losing a lot of money. Because my lawyer bills just started kicking up like crazy when the delays in times because it's amendment after amendment after amendment and every single time it's another couple thousand dollars you're paying the lawyers and that's not fees that were budgeted in my budget so that's stuff that you're going to paying for unfortunately i'm well i i'm super <laughs> excited for you it sounds like a dream location in your dream neighborhood and and you guys already bought a house congrats it's like the stars are aligning for you nick like everything is happening at the same time yeah, so this just seems so. so I'm unfortunate at this point. <laughs> do Do you mind sharing how much you're paying in rent? Yes. So I'm twenty five dollars a square foot. So that's another reason why I. That's another reason why I waited for the location. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so man. the area I am in Jersey City. So the way Jersey City works is the closer you are to New York City, aka on the water, the more expensive it is. So yeah. the farther you get away from the water, the less expensive. I'm probably half a mile maybe from the water, not even that far. But my area was still considered like maybe a developmental kind of zone because there's all brand new apartment complex and condos being built around the park. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only dentist who's in that region because everyone else is on the water and they're away from all these things. So like foot traffic, all these buildings all around it, it it seemed like everything was aligning to keep this location. And especially with the price per square foot, which was pretty darn good, triple net, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. but- with $25 a square foot, you can't really beat that for a city. No, you really can't. Yeah. That's, oh my gosh. Um, For, for those of us who don't know what triple net is, like if they're just starting out this journey, what, can you explain what triple net is? 
Uh, so th I think from what I understand, cause I'm not the smartest at this stuff. Um, <laughs> you're, you're going to have to pay your fair share of, uh, like building taxes, yeah. and other little things in the building that like, if they have to fix something, you have to, you're, you have a 0. 0.0, whatever percent of the whole building. And when you're talking about a building as big as mine, obviously I'm only like 0. 0.0 something percent of the whole building, but right. I have to pay into the pay in to keep maintaining the building and doing stuff like that, pay my portion of the taxes, all of those little things in the building is kind of what's involved in the triple net. Nice. Um, okay. And I just want to clarify, you, you said it was $25 a square foot. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what you consider a good deal. I consider that a good deal in, in where <laughs> I am because every, everywhere else yeah. I was looking like Hoboken, they were looking at $70 a square foot to start for places that were half as shitty as what I'm looking like city prices like my old place i worked at jersey city he was paying he paid 44 dollars a square foot when he rented when he leased his place 10 years ago so those are the prices that you're looking at so 25 for jersey is pretty darn good <laughs> so, so for those of you at home listening and you just threw up a little bit at that number just realize that see it's all relative that's why when when everybody gets on on social media and starts talking about like their rent and what they're paying and all this it's it is it, you cannot compare like nope. everybody is so different so nick thinks he got a great deal at 25 dollars <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all relative no i i my buddy just texted me this morning he's opening a practice in southern new jersey he's a pediatric dentist but even he's in like the boondocks of southern new jersey and i told him i got 25 he's like oh wow that's pretty good they're around 30 dollars down here and he's in the boondocks not even near a city nothing and he's still paying that in jersey oh my so like, gosh. it just is what it is unfortunately it it really is and i mean if if you think about how often dentists pick up and move we it's very hard for us with what once we trench and equip it, we're pretty much there. So yep. what is your, what is your long-term vision for, for how you practice? Do you want it to be like one super high end boutique practice? Do you want multiple locations? Have you thought that far ahead? Yeah. So like my goal was, you know, with this one, obviously it's going to be cosmetic and surgical base. Um, that's, that's what I like to do. You know, obviously um, my goal is to get a th like three practices total kind of in a triangle in Jersey. I want a second one in the Jersey shore area. So when I get a little older, I can focus my time in the Jersey shore and then have a third one. That's kind of another satellite that will be a little bit more West. Uh, all of these being in what I consider to be like, you know, higher end kind of areas. Um, just because that that's the kind of clientele I'll be looking for with the cosmetics and stuff like that. So that's my goal in the future. Well, I, especially now that you're a Coys grad, you're in a high end building. Like I have no doubt. And I mean, you're, you're, you've been super successful thus far. So I can only imagine like <laughs> where you're going. And well, is that where you got the name limitless dental? I you know, the, like the, the name thing, I'm, I'm sure, you know, like the name thing's really hard. Like you, yeah. you, someone, they, every single brand of yours has a different opinion on whatever name you give them. Yeah. So it's just like, I was in between like unlimited, limitless or something kind of unique like that. And then at the point I looked up limitless in the country and there wasn't that many limitless dentals. And I like that. Uh, so that's how I kind of just ended up with that. And also follows my kind of mantra a little bit. Cause I'm, I just go, go, go. <laughs> that's awesome. Did you get it trademarked? I was that I was just thinking that the other day. Uh, I have a DBA for in New Jersey, so technically I own the name in Jersey, but um, I will probably have to trademark at that at some point. To be honest, did you trademark yours? I did. did oh help? man, it, it, it was. I I don't know if you know that you probably don't know this, but I was in a trademark dispute for two years. Why? Wow, what happened? Yeah, like okay, so I. Sorry for the tangent, everybody at home. But um, <laughs> so I, my my original name wasn't supposed to be Smiling Co. It was actually Smile Bar because okay. I wanted like a wine bar themed dental practice. Yeah. And then um, I had already done all of my um, like licensing and like I got my logo and the whole nine. And it turned out that there was a Smile Bar in Boston that owned the trademark. So then I had like I had already spent thousands on 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 everything. 
And then, so I had to switch gears and then I went on, um, uspto.gov that's the actual trademark database and i would definitely recommend you to do that as well nick as well as anybody listening uspto.gov i looked up smiling co it was not in um in the database so i went with it a year after i opened like we were already running business oh, i got a cease branded. and desist yes a cease and desist by this man, he owned Smile Co. One word, but I'm Smile and Company, Smile and Co. Yeah. But he said that it was too close to his trademark, and my attorney. So I had to hire a trademark how, attorney. How did they find out about you? Because he's all in Boston. Um. So this is another one in oh, another California. One. Ah. Okay. This that's why. In California, because I um I switched my name. So, okay. so not Smile Bar, but Smile and Co. Mm -hmm. Smile Co. sent me a cease and desist. I'm glad I, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I haven't actually talked about this because I yeah. had like an NDA and the whole thing. Um, and my attorney, so I had to hire an attorney. My attorney said, Ashley, you will win this, but they are going to get, it's going to get dragged in court for yes. upwards of two years. By the time you're done, you will have spent six More figures money. in legal fees and is it worth it? So I ended up paying him um, a freaking like, it, I, pay, I paid him tens of thousands basically <laughs> to go away, which yeah. is so awful. And um, so yeah, that was like my first year in. So two years, Nick, of like sleepless nights, thinking Jeez. that I had like to change my entire business name and everything. Oh. I'm sorry. That's, that's not something easy to go through, especially no. when you open up too. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely jump on the database. Yeah. So, so like, my, like I was like, the, I've seen like some dental offices trade trademark their names, but like not, not a lot of offices do. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why. Is that just something in dentistry? No one really cares about. I, I feel like dentists, um, well, the majority of dentists practicing just want to do their one practice in their geographic location. But right. that's why I asked you about your long-term vision. If yeah. eventually you think that Limitless could be a national brand, yeah. that is when you're considering a trademark. Yeah. No, my concerns was that if I hopefully am successful with the multiple practices, if someone else was like, oh, maybe I can jump on the limitless in a different state exactly. and they start brand themselves as limitless. And then it's just like, uh, which I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, and dentists, we really, um, we like to copy each other because there's not a lot of creativity in dentistry, yep. unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. So definitely jump on that trademark. Um, no, because especially I, I can absolutely see the vision that you're going for. And it it's a very notable, like copy worthy brand. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you need to protect it. So uh, for your first startup, I know this is not on on this conversation. Um, how how big was your has your first all your because you're in, in the process of your second one right yeah. now, right? What's yeah. how big is your first one? Um, my first office is six ops and okay. uh, just under two thousand square feet. Cool. And what, how much was, if you don't mind me, how much was your build out? Oh, so I purchased the building. Oh, you purchased the building too. I purchased oh. the building, but get this, it was dirt cheap because Good. it was a piece of shit. It was <laughs> literally like a teardown. Mm -hmm. um, I purchased it for 350000 Nice. And okay. um, and I gutted it. And then I put about 600,000 in, in improvements. Okay. Um, but now like my area, it, it's gone up a lot. So yeah, so you probably benefited from even having owning the location. Unfortunately, I couldn't yeah. do that. Uh, oh. I have the lease. It's it, and thing in the cities. It's like, it's really hard. Like, cause I was looking, I was looking for places to buy that maybe had somewhere I can rent like a set apartment attached to it, something like that. But like, yeah. In the city, no one wants to sell. Everyone nope. just wants to lease, so they just have you tied in. But that's why I got such a good tenant improvement, just because gotcha. I, you, know, you wouldn't get that if you if you owned, obviously. No, a hundred and four thousand. You said in yes. Yep. Yep. Does so that my, include my, free rent too. 
uh, doesn't include free rent. So initially before the squatters happened, uh, when I didn't know they were squatters, oh they, my gave me, gosh. Yeah, they gave me six free months rent. Um, and then one, the week before I was supposed to get the location, uh, I get an email from the landlord. I was at the Yankee game with my whole, all my friends for my birthday. And it was like, we're sorry, we're not getting you location. We lost an eviction court and they're squatting. And I was like, this is the first time I heard of this. And I signed this lease months ago. And you what? guys are just telling me. Yes. Yeah. So like after all these more lease negotiations, they ended up giving me 10 free months of rent. So that started in February. So I essentially have now until December. If I can get my doors open, hopefully in the next six to eight weeks, I'll have plenty of time to utilize that you know, $25 a square foot times 2,600. <laughs> uh, how, how does squatting even happen? I don't even understand. So like the, the place that was at mine was a UFC gym, um, which to me like confuses me because like I get it if it's residential and your family's living there and I get it. You cannot kick a family on the street, but when you're talking business like this, like why can't the building just switch the locks? Like when you have someone else that's right. already paying and already signed. So for me, I had months where I had no idea when they were going to be out of there. I had no, like just sitting around and the building was telling me nothing. They're like, we don't know either. And I'm like, what's going on? Like I'm wasting my time here. Should I go somewhere else? You already have my money. I already gave them first last month's rent, my security. It's like 20 grand. I was like, what's going on here? Oh um, my gosh. Yeah. And eventually they won in court and they, they got him out. And so that's when I just got it February 1st. Oh, sh well, congrats. Oh, thank, you. thank you. So stressful. If you haven't aged in the startup process, <laughs> you definitely will. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it's like every day. It's like it's like another fire you have to put out every day. <laughs> or you have to send an email to someone who's not doing their job or not responding to or a rep just hasn't answered you. Once they get your money, they stop responding too. Like oh. that's, what, that's what I noticed. And it's just like, eh. Oh my Such God. Yeah, and <laughs> unfortunately, this is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I know. That's what I would say. It's like, it's just going to keep going. I was like, oh, great. It's going to be on fire all the time. Um, so Nick, where exactly are you in the construction process? So we're probably just about at the 50% done mark. They, you know, last, so the one good thing that like ideal praxis does is before the walls are closed, um, when all the plumbing, so, and that's one other thing, one of the big issues was we have a structural slab that's underneath my location and it has rhubarb in it. They couldn't, they couldn't ditch. Okay. <gasps> what? Yeah. So like we tried for months to get this information from the building because they weren't sending us plans. So like my contractors into this being, he thinks he's, he's going to ditch out and he's going to do that. And then like a couple weeks, months go by and then like, oh, you can't, we have a structural slab. And I was like, can you send me the work? No one had an x-ray. No one had anything. So we're just going based off hearsay. And it's kind of in a very confusing spot. Uh, and then at that point, we're just like, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to run it above. Uh, because a lot of places in New York City run the wiring above because they can't trench underneath. Okay. So, so we we stuck with that. Uh, we're doing minor trenching. So we're like, we're essentially trenching from like the foot of the chair to the floor, just so you don't see that wire. And then everything's running above. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yes. So it, it it was a process just to have to deal with that and like figuring out a, a second way because like they didn't even tell me this months and months ago. So like I already signed the lease for this too. So I was like, we have to figure out another way. Uh, so there is always another way for any of you out there. <laughs> just ask the right contractors, ask the right people. Um, and, and, you know, you'll find a way, but going back to your original question where, where I'm at uh, last week, I had uh, Steve Burns with Ideal Praxis, who I love there. He's their main contractor guy. He's been around for like 30 years in dentistry. He actually fl uh, flew in. Then I had the whole team there. There was like plumbing, you know, the contractors, Henry Shine, everyone that was there. And we walked through room by room before the walls are even closed, changing, you know, where are these all every outlets, you know, plumbing, everything. So we're about to close the walls like this week or next week. So oh, that's so fun. Isn't this process fun. so exciting? It is. It's just like seeing the like new areas in the place. You're like, oh, wow, that's like what I thought of like months and months and months ago. And now it's there. That's <laughs> so cool. Did you did you des design the floor plan? So I got uh, really lucky. My girlfriend's an interior designer. Um, nice. so she's did that did my house and office at the same time. Now I got a floor plan design from ideal practices also john malone who works with them he, he was he's been great too but they give us a, a you know a tentative kind of floor plan it wasn't the exact measurements of the space so there's a lot of stuff on the fly we've been having to change 
Um, but I got the main floor plan from them and then all the interior design work me and my girlfriend have been doing. Oh, so fun. That's like, honestly, that's the only reason why I love startups. I just want to build shit. Like, I know I just, um, <laughs> I just ordered a custom arcade game for the office too. And like this really bougie with limitless dental and like Pac-Man eating a letter and everything. And I'm like, well, that was kind of expensive, but like, it's going to look <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Where, okay. Back up. Where do you even get something like that? <laughs> where what company was this babe creative arcades uh, is where we got ours um it's it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination how much um, is not cheap if you it's don't like mind? it was like 3300 uh okay. for a single arcade game i mean like that's not like terrible in the grand scheme of things but when and you're it's building instagrammable up, it's instagrammable exactly yeah. and, you know I, my vision for that you know, we got 3,300 games on there, right? And there's high high scores. You know, once a month, I can do a video. Hey, whoever has the high score at the end of the month gets a free whitening. And then uh, you know, yeah. I can do videos, do little things like that. Come a little earlier for your appointment. Be on time. Play a game while you're waiting. So some little things like that is what I what I envision getting in there. And then me just having the high score in every game and no one ever win a whitening. That's the, that's another <laughs> that's another video I was gonna do at some it's point. Oh, no, Doctor Mick <laughs> <Nick> again. <laughs> Um, so what are you doing right now in terms of marketing? Cause obviously, I mean, just, just that alone, if you guys, if you, if that doesn't speak to Nick's marketing brain, like always thinking about like how to draw up things worthy of uh, being sticky. Like, have you heard, have you read that book? Um, I, I think I have. What, what, which I, oh gosh. I um, name. Something some about sticking small business books that I've read that I just forgot at this point because there's so much running in our head. But this I remember the stickiness from somewhere. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like that's that is sticky. And um if if I copy that, I will definitely tag you. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck, Joe, these people are awesome. We just got the designs from them too. Um, like an hour, I think right when we started this call, my girlfriend just got the new design. So I'm excited to see that. Nice. But like, I would highly suggest, like, it's just like these cool little things that like that, that excites me for the office like yeah. that. Cause yeah. you have to find excitement when you're doing all these like tedious things, like this one thing, oh my God, I got this, but I have to go on 30 different Zooms this week. At least you got something that's cool and creative and that's yeah. getting, getting me going, you know? Can, okay, how have we already been talking for 47 minutes? I don't even understand. Oh, geez. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're going on too many tangents. No, <laughs> no, I've had so much fun and we haven't even gotten like, okay, I'm see, this is why we're going to have more Nick on the show, guys. Weekly is our goal. Nick, it's um, if, if you can make this a weekly thing just so we can keep up yeah. to date. Yeah. Um, yeah. That will be awesome because as you can see, you can do so much just with one hour. What yeah. is um what is the equipment that you ended up going with? Have you chosen yet? Yeah, yeah. That, that I, <laughs> before the squatters, I chose it. So oh. they, they, it was so long. So I ended up with Belmont uh, chairs. Okay. Yeah, I thought they were like, you know, everyone says a deck and everyone knows a deck. They're very expensive, guys. Like, don't you want to use that money towards a scanner like or something else? Like I already bought a Trios 5. So I'm starting with the Trios 5. I'm starting with the Sprint Ray ecosystem. I just got the 55S with the, crown, you know, the ceramic crown that they're doing. Uh, and now at this point, my last selection is what CBCT unit I do. Um, but, you know, all of these things is, are important, you know, so you, you got to get it's just. What, what CBCT <laughs> are you leaning towards? So, you know, I initially was looking at Prexion Ray Scan because of like those are more in like the budget, more 50, 60,000, which is like a little bit more budget friendly than the 80s, 90s. Um, but I have a couple potential brand deals with um, a couple CT companies. I can't really say now, but yeah, I might be getting a better deal via one of them. So nice. you might see branding from a specific one of them on my page coming soon. <laughs> Um, since you mentioned it, I mean, okay, can we just um, talk about your your influence right now? Like, so how have you leveraged your your social media followers to this point? Like, have you used um, ha has that gotten you much in terms of um, like free stuff, discounts, all of that good stuff? Yeah. So like, you know, like I said, like when I was like really involved with it years and years ago, now I'm getting back into it. But when I was, you know, I, 
I always wanted to be a dentist first, not an influencer. So like the way I position myself, like there's a lot of dentists out there now who are just like trying to get likes and followers because they're just trying to be, I guess, an influencer first, dentist second. Um, but like with the education that like we've been through and going through Coist and spending my money on that, like I would rather be a very good dentist than a very good influencer personally. Um, so like for me, I don't really just do random brand collaborations with like no, like smaller companies that I don't really like or agree with just to take a paycheck. You yeah. know, I've worked with a lot of scrub companies and in the way, way past that would just like send you free scrubs. And like, for me at this point, like getting free stuff isn't like really doesn't make sense for me at this point. Uh, you know, I've worked with Colgate. I work with Crest. I've worked with Henry Shine. I work with Dentsply Serona. Uh, I, you know, there's Quip. I've worked with Zoom Whitening. I, I worked with a bunch of these companies and, you know, the way that I found that works best um, is just get paid a fee to do a certain amount of posts, but use their product. Um, you know, I was already recommend, I, and I did Sensodyne Nourish too. I, I was like their spokesperson for a little bit, but I used, I used Sensodyne myself. So like, that's a product that I use, I endorse. And then I was getting paychecks from these companies, which if I focus my time primarily on wanting to do that, like some, some, you know, dentists want to, you can make a good amount of money from them. You know, I was making multiple thousands per post. <laughs> And like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's like, it's cool. But like, you know, for me to make that post, like for instance, in the past, I was getting 3,500 or four, four grand for a single post. Okay. But like, it's cool. It sounds great, but like, it's a whole day of filming. And then you have to pay oh. an editor, you have to pay a videographer, and then you have to send it for edits and then edits come back because like these bigger companies that you can't, you, it's not just as you calling up your friend, be like, Hey, look at this video. Is this good to post? It yes. has to go layers and layers. When you're working with a Colgate and stuff like that, it's, it takes weeks. It takes months of planning oh. for one single video. That's and you're just wild. It's like, do I want to waste all this time coming in on a Sunday filming for eight hours? And like, I got extremely lucky. So my brother is a videographer out, out in oh, California. Nice. Okay. Wait, so, did you say California? California. Yeah. He lives in Where? Burbank. Burbank. Oh, down South. Yeah, I'm trying to get him to move back to Jersey, though. I want him full time doing videos at my office. Yeah. So like, I think in a few months, I'm, I'm pushing him to do that. I think <laughs> he'll come back. <laughs> but again, I got lucky because I had him. Uh, so like when I first started doing the videos, I would like ask for his help. And like, you know, he would kind of tell me I would do it by myself. And then as I started getting these brand ones, that's when I started flying him in from California. He would bring his camera that he used on Netflix movies to film some of my videos. Then he goes home and then he edits them for a full week. So like normal oh people, God. if you're getting paid three grand for one post, right. you have to pay a videographer and editor, probably 1500 to two grand of that. Okay. Then after that, you have to pay taxes. Where are you really get? where are you really making money to make it worth your time for that? And, yeah. and that's the way I, I saw it. So now I like to integrate it just in my, in my posts. And just when people ask me, I'm like, this is what I use. Cause I believe in it. This is what I like. And yeah. that's how I see my branding is just not necessarily promoting one product, but being with a company that I believe in. And then, then just seeing it using my posts and be like, Hey, what veneer cement you use? Oh, I use these guys. Cause I, I really like them. Oh. And I also, you know, whatever that, that, that's how I kind of work. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. How, how long does it take you to do just one of your videos that you that isn't a sponsored ad? So it, it all depends. You know, I would rather uh, film on one day or two days over a weekend. Like typically now what my brother does is he flies in on a Thursday and we film Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days in a row. Yeah, it, it's brutal. They're long days too. So like we just film, 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 and then we have content for months. And then gotcha. we just figure out what works. Because like, I don't know these people who just like sit at the end of the day and then like they have the brain power to make a funny video and they do that every day. I'm like, I, I can't do that. That's yeah. like so much mental power to do that after seeing patients all day. So for me, I thought that was the most important thing. Schedule time, mm -hmm. gain content for weeks or months ahead, and then just keep repeating. Are you doing all of your copywriting? Like you, you, you make all of the captions for everything and all of that. Yeah. yeah, and then are you responding to all the DMs that you're getting? So like this is what kind of burned me in the beginning. So yeah. when I was getting big, like I stopped responding to people because I was getting a lot of weird in the beginning, really weird messages before Instagram started cleaning up their their inboxes and with their whatever. 
I was getting so many things. I was getting like people trying to steal my credit cards and stuff like that. And like, I was getting calls, just people, so many fake people just doing that. And like, I kind of got like a little annoyed with it. (laughs) So it's just tough because you got to just keep working through it. But it's, it's annoying for sure. It's a full-time job, just that part. And if you don't respond, the issue with these social media is if you don't respond, they downplay you in the algorithm. And like, I used to be an algorithm king. Like I knew it like the back of my hand back in the day. It's just, you respond to people. You, if they're sending you a DM to your story, if you don't respond, they're not going to watch your story next week. Right. They, they think they're, they get offended if you don't respond to a lot of these people out there. So like I used to respond when I was growing and I was responding to all of them. And then once when I start, started slowing my res- response and comments and stuff, that's when the engagements are going down. So like you have, if you're going to do it, you have to respond to every comment. You have to respond to every story. You're going to offend someone if you don't. And then that one person can maybe not be a patient anymore. Maybe he was thinking about it for two or three years. You don't respond to one message. Now they forget about you. It's, yeah. it's, crazy. it's crazy. Now, okay. Besides social media, have you started doing any other marketing for you for Limitless? Yes. Yeah, so I'm working with uh, Grace Rizza uh, with Identity Marketing. I think she's down in Texas. Um, you know, that was a very hard thing to choose, to be honest with you, because like I was giving a couple different things from ideal practices. I go on the Facebook groups, one of your, one of them being yours. And I literally just typed in like marketing agencies. And like, I just saw her name pop up a lot with a couple of the other ones. So like I decided, you know, contact her. I ended up going with her. She gave me a good price. Um, so she has my website up already. She's already working on my Google, my Facebook pages, um, you know, all the landing pages that you can think I already have a website up and then, you know, we're going to probably start Facebook and Google, Mar- uh, Google ads, probably two or three weeks prior to doors opening. Um, not only that, I am also doing some ground marketing. So like I'm planning to go a couple to a couple like town fair, local events in Jersey city. Cause there's a lot of them around there. Um, I'm also going to be going to the doggy park and bring, bringing doggy park toothpaste, uh, my branding on it. And I'm gonna be like, yeah. Hey, come inside for doggy treats, uh, to bring them in. But like all these little things, I'm going to town meetings, um, get, getting some, a representative limitless dental going to town meetings. Uh, th- that's the only way you're going to get involved with everything. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, isn't it so much work? Yeah. <laughs> so Just saying, God, that's so much. What am I doing? <laughs> Dude, uh, shaking hands, kissing babies. Yep. That's, that's what you got to do. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, are you, are you naturally an extrovert? I'm not really, I don't consider myself an extrovert. Like I I'm an extrovert with my friends. I think, um, like the persona that I have on social media, like, especially when like, I do like those, those funny videos of like my funny voice or Ben Stiller, whatever kind of voice it is. Like, I'm not like really like that in person, <laughs> but like when I'm j- joking around, I can get like that, but only if I'm like kind of comfortable with you. So like, yeah. it's weird that like people think like I'm this crazy, I'm good in front of the camera. It's just like, I worked at doing that. And then like, I just got lucky. I had a brother who was good at helping me bring it out of me. Cause like when it's me and my brother one-on-one, like we joke when we're kids and then he'll just be filming. Like, as I'm joking, he'd be like, yo, that was good. Keep going. And then it kind of just snowballs. And then like, now everyone thinks I'm an extrovert. <laughs> nice. Okay, so this is a big question that a lot of docs have, yeah. and it pertains to associateships. What yeah. is your system of either do they know, or do they not know? Are you letting them down one by one, or how does that so, work? Um, I've worked at 14 associateships over the past five or six. One four. One four. One four. One four. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've been around the block, and like the so the reason why I personally did that is because like, I didn't want to go and be a drill and filler at a lot of these places. So like I found offices that needed what I was good at, like implants, like it's, I go in, I do implants at one place, you know, the one of the, my jobs right now, I'm doing all on fours. I'm doing cosmetics as an associate, because that's how I branded. Like, that's how I branded myself. That's how I like looked for jobs. And each office that I picked had something that they were good at. One was good at business. One was good at implants. One was good at cosmetics. One was good at root canals. And like, I went to all these different places and I like picked up everything. And that's why I chose all these different ones. Um, Going back to your question, they, they all know right now I'm opening my own place. uh, So there's no issues at all. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I I got, I drive two hours a day to one of my jobs though. So like, it it doesn't bother him because I'm, I'm two hours away. (laughs) That is insane, Nick. You have so much hustle and grit like that. It's, 
if you want to work, if you want to work in multiple offices, like I did in single days, you're going to have to drive. So like two days a week, I drive two hours to, and then another two hours back. And then the other days I'm in about an hour to those places. So it's just like, if you're willing to drive and suck it up, like you can learn some awesome stuff and you can produce a lot. Yeah. If you just go to the right place, you said be willing to drive for it if, you, if you're going to do it. Jeez. I, and then in your own practice, when you start mm -hmm. up, how many days are you opening and are you going to be in network with insurances? Uh, so I'm open. I'm going to be Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and I'm keeping my associateship on Tuesday and Thursdays. Um, okay. And um, what was the other, what was the half of that? I'm uh, sorry. Um, uh, insurances. Insurances. Uh, yeah, I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we we settled on four insurances, maybe five. Um, that's something cool that Ideal does too. You know, they had an Excel sheet. Uh, essentially what they do is we get all the fees for all the different insurances. We put them in one big Excel sheet. I go over fees for my top four or five. And that's how I settled on them who had the better fees. I mean, my goal is to get out of them as soon as I can. Um, just because I know that's not the type of dentistry I want to be doing, but unfortunately when you're first starting up, as you know, as is, you got to get, you know, butts in the seat, <laughs> at least the yes. pay yeah. the rent. A hundred percent. Have you thought about how many people you are going to employ? Yes. So I'm going to have a front desk, um, one assistant and, and a hygienist on Oh, you are starting with how I, am. <laughs> I didn't really want to say it. like a lot of people are like, you should be doing your own cleanings. Like my consultant company was like pounding me, like you're going to do your own cleanings. And I was just like, and I was like sucking it up. And then like three or four weeks ago, you know, I, I, I don't think my um, consultants really knew that like I was on social media and I have a, like a decent, I have an Excel sheet with 150 names of patients have been wanting to follow me just wow. in around the area. So like, I know that's not like that much, but like these are that's loyal huge. people. And they're all people I've already seen at different offices that like, amazing. yeah. So like, once I said that to them, they're like, you're going to need a hygienist. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not good at it. I know I'm not. So like, I, why should I do it? <laughs> that, that post that you did about the dentist without a hygienist and the dentist yeah. with. What is though? It really is. I tagged my hygiene, my, my hygienist <laughs> on it. I was like, this is hilarious. And it's so true. Yeah. They make us work better. Oh, a hundred percent. A killer hygienist will make your life, uh, it'll be night and day. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when one of the offices that I was at, um, they were a very good high-end cosmetic cosmetic practice. The hygienist there was actually at a previous office with me, but she came there. Like, she's so good that she was treating playing like all on four. She was treating playing like crazy stuff before I even got in the room. She comes in, I'm like, all right, let me start about an implant. And they're like, she already explained everything. And I was like, this is awesome. Why can't every office be like this? And it saves you so much time and so much headaches. You don't have to like do all that. You know, again, they're worth their weight in gold if you find a good one. For 100%, sure. 100%. 100%. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. We are already over an hour. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Took up too no, much time. <laughs> no, no, no apologies. I'm sorry that it went. No, it's okay. Um, but as you can see, guys, Nick is going to be a super fun doc to follow um, just to see what you're doing with Limitless Dental. I mean, you are limitless and and, we, and it shows and I'm super excited. And um, OK, when is your grand opening? So right now we're thinking like the first or second week of June. So okay. I'm probably going to have like a ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm trying to get the mayor of the city in there. So like we try to, I'm trying to like get that and have like an opening party and stuff like that. Oh, that'll be so amazing. Well, yeah. if you can carve it into your schedule this year, mm -hmm. I would love to have you and your girlfriend in wine country in November as, as my guest, as oh, my personal guest. And that way we can meet meet each other and we can like talk more about startups. And it's it's like a celebratory thing for you and limitless. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to be there. I'm sure my girlfriend would love the wine. Yeah, she goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, you guys, have you guys been to Napa before? I haven't. I, I've been to California, just LA though. And oh. she's never even been to California. So <laughs> Okay, it's done. So um I'll when we get offline, um, and we can just connect over the details. Um, I would, li I would be so honored to have you guys. Yeah, I would be happy to come. Thanks for having. Thanks for the invite. Maybe we'll have you speak, Nick. You want to speak? I could do that. Uh, what well, depends <laughs> what you want me to speak on. <laughs> We're gonna do a couple like uh, IG videos, okay? 
Yeah, yeah, we can do that. If they're good, if they're good. I like good content. <laughs> of course. Wait, and then, I, and then we have to take a selfie. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of the Making of Limitless Dental. If you are... <laughs> if you are liking what you're hearing which i am sure you are because nick is super charismatic make sure to follow his journey we're gonna document his story in real time and get to know nick get to know what he's doing in uh jersey city and and i have no doubt you're gonna crush it nick and nick where is the best place that people can reach out to you uh, I would say Instagram probably be the easiest. That's what I mostly respond to. Uh, so it's dr.nickc um, is my Instagram account or my website. You can just drnickcrdl.com or limitlessdentaljc.com. <laughs> they all go to the same place. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, you guys um, heard it here first. Thank you, Nick, so much. I can't wait Thank to you. share your story with everybody. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Have a great weekend. I'll you see too. you in Napa. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Right, have a good one. Have a good one. Bye.